Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great, you know, beginning to this day. And so I uh, just want to encourage you once again, we are jumping into God's word. You know, uh, we are going to be uh, jumping into 1 Samuel chapter 2, and uh, we're going to be looking at verse, starting at verse 12. So you might remember uh, yesterday we, we uh, talked about Hannah and her song that was very similar to Mary's song, very similar circumstances. Um, uh, maybe Hannah's right in between Elizabeth, which we'll talk about this week, and Mary, you know, in terms of... Mary didn't ask for what was happening to her. Hannah had asked and God provided, you know, a son, you know, and so um, uh, we're going to be able to find out, you know, what happens because she said, I'm going to give this son to the Lord. And literally she's giving that over. And our kind of our takeaway was we don't own anything. You know, we need to give it all to him. So excited that you're here with us. It's great to see you guys, you know, once again. And so let's start in verse 12 it says, now the sons of Eli were scoundrels. So again, Eli is the priest, you know, of the time. He's kind of one of the, the leading priests of that time, and they are scoundrels. Now, notice what the priests would do, who had no respect for the Lord or for their duties as priests. Whenever anyone offered a sacrifice, Eli's son would send over a servant with a three-pronged fork, while the meat with the sacrificed animal was still boiling, the servant would stick the fork into the pot and demand that whatever it brought up be given to Eli's sons. All the Israelites who came to worship at Shiloh were treated this way. Sometimes the servant would come even before the animal's fat and had bur that had burned on the altar. He would demand raw meat before it was even being boiled so he could be used for roasting. See, what the way that was done, you know, in that day and age is that, you know, there'd be a certain section that would be left over, you know, for the priest. So the priest would be taken care of, you know, based on the sacrifices that were being made. But that's not what these guys were doing. They were trying to do it as soon as possible. They're trying to get the choice meat. They were trying to get the best part of the meat, which was reserved for the sacrifice to God. So basically what they're saying is, you know what you're going to be given to God first? We're going to take that portion. Uh, that uh, That's the place that we believe that we should be, you know, in people's lives. You know, so, so the men offering the sacrifice might reply, take as much as you want, but the fat must be burned first. Then the servant would demand, no, give it to me now, or I'll take it by force. So the sin of these young men was very serious in the Lord's sight, for they treated the Lord's offering with contempt. You know, that's the last thing that you want to do is that when people sacrifice, you know, things to God that somehow you think that you belong to it, like you deserve it. And so it's always important for the pastors, the priests, the, the, the people who are spiritually in charge to actually have a, you know, good standing before God, first and foremost, and also do what's right before the people. Verse 18, but Samuel, though he was only a boy, served the Lord. He wore a linen garment like that of a priest. So again, Samuel's been given over by Hannah, you know, in order to serve the Lord, and he continued to do so. So what I really appreciate about this, I just want to stop right there and just be able to process this. In a world that I know, especially in a country, that we get so, you know, um, uh, concerned, um, some freak out a little bit about the direction, you know, of how things are going, and we wonder, is the next generation going to follow the Lord? I just pray that this would be an encouragement, that even though um, here's a boy who's in a situation where so many of his peers, because he's almost like the adopted son now, you know, of Eli, are going absolutely opposite of God, that he is actually one that's holding firm for God. So just know that God is always going to raise up people, you know, who are followers of him. And my prayer is that that would be your sons and daughters, granddaughters and grandsons. That would be my sons and my daughter as well. And so, but Eli was still, oh, there was a boy. He served the Lord. He wore this linen garment like that of a priest. Each year, his mother made a small coat for him and brought it to him when she came with her husband for the sacrifice. So this lets us know that Hannah was still very much alive, you know, and very much involved in um, her son Samuel's life uh, that she would visit. Now, it's only like once a year, kind of the way some of us feel when we send off our kids to college, that the visits get less and less, but there's still impact that's being made. And so it says this, uh, before they returned home, Eli, you know, uh, would bless uh, Elkanah, which is his dad, and his wife, 
which, you know, which this is Samuel's dad and his wife, Hannah, you know, and say, may the Lord give you other children to take place of this one that she gave to the Lord. And the Lord blessed Hannah and she conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. I love that because when we honor God, God has a tendency to honor us. When we put him first, we're the ones that seem to receive the blessing. Now, that's not why we do something. You know, we're not doing it like, well, God, here's bargaining time. If I do this, do you promise to do that? That's not the way God works. What we were supposed to do is say, God, you're first in my life. And I can't believe that Hannah, remember again, Hannah, she was barren. She couldn't have a child. And what'd she do? She gave over the only child that she had because she made a promise to God. If you give me a son, I will give that son 100% back to you. And so Eli recognizes this gift. Eli recognizes and begins to pray on behalf of Samuel and Elkanah and be, I mean, on behalf of Hannah and Elkanah and pray for them to have more kids and they have five more a woman who was barren now has five has now had six kids you know in 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 what god has done in her life um i can just tell you you know when it comes to giving you know um when it comes to giving of uh, uh resources or giving people or giving our time you know it's amazing how much more we get back like let me give you a couple examples when we give time to the lord on a regular basis during the day it's amazing how more often than not, those days seem to go better than others. Doesn't mean there's better things that happen. We just might experience better perspective and circumstance because we spent time with the Lord. When we spend time serving, when we spend time um, giving it to our neighbors and, and other people on behalf of the Lord, it's amazing how we're the ones that walk away blessed. And when we give financially, I cannot tell you how many testimonies I can give you of people who give 10% or more of their resources to the Lord on a consistent basis that it comes back to them in blessing in, and, and, and also in resource. We see that time and time again. Now we don't do it like we're gambling, like, well, God, if I give you 10%, I know you're gonna give me back 20%. That's a good investment. But I can tell you when you give to the Lord, the investment is even eternal you know, that we were able to do that. And so you'll, you'll be able to see it does return back to us, maybe not on this side, but it returns back to us tenfold or more on the other side. Here's what I can promise you. I've never yet met, I have not yet met someone who has decided to give financially to the Lord on a consistent basis who has not received as much or more in blessing or guidance or peace or even some prosperity. You see all of that. It's not a prosperity gospel. Let me be very, very, very clear. Again, we don't do it for that. I'm just saying that uh, you don't miss it because you're putting the Lord first. And in this case, because Hannah put God first, she conceived and gave birth to three sons and two more daughters. Amazing. And again, that doesn't mean it's going to happen for everybody. That was just what God decided to do in her life. Now, Eli was very old and he was aware of what his sons were doing to the people of Israel. He knew, for instance, that his sons were seducing the young women who assisted at the entrance of the temple. Again, these are priests, you know, that are coming in. Priests, are you kidding me? They're seducing gals as they come in to the temple. And it says, Eli said to them, I have been hearing reports from all the people about the wicked things that you are doing. Why do you keep sinning? You must stop, my sons. The reports I hear among the Lord's people are not good. If someone sins against another person, God can mediate for the guilty party. But if someone sins against the Lord, who can intercede? But Eli's son wouldn't listen to their father, for the Lord was already planning to put them to death. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew taller and grew in favor with the Lord and with the people. And so with one day, it says this, a man uh, of God came to Eli and gave him this message from the Lord. I revealed myself to your ancestors when they were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt. I chose your ancestor Aaron from among all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to be offered sacrifice to the Lord, to burn incense and to the wear of the priestly vests as he served me. And I assigned the sacrificial offerings to you priests. 
So again, he's reminding them that there's a priestly succession in the nation of Israel, that Aaron was the first priest on behalf of the nation of Israel as they entered into the promised land. And God says through his descendants, they would be known as Levites and that they would actually be the ones who would take care of and serve first and foremost the Lord on behalf of the people. And here they are not doing what they have been charged to do. So why do you scorn my sacrifices and offerings? Why do you give more your sons more honor than you give me? For you and they have become fat from the best offerings of my people Israel. So this one is hard to swallow because this is actually an indictment on Eli. Why do you give your sons more honor than you give me? In other words, he knew what was going on. He was warning his kids, but he didn't do anything about it. And it was on his responsibility as the servant and the leader and the father of these boys to actually step on their, on their behalf. And so the kids are going to be punished for their sins, but Eli as well. Therefore, the Lord, the God of Israel says, I promise that your branch of the tribe of Levi would always be my priests, but I will honor those who honor me and I'll despise those who think lightly of me. The time is coming while I'll put an end to your family so it will no longer serve as my priests. All the members of your family will die before their time. None will reach old age. You will watch with envy as I pour out prosperity on the people of Israel, but no members of your family will ever live out their days. The few not cut off from serving at my altar will survive, but only so their eyes can go blind and their hearts break and their children will die a violent death. And to prove that what I have said will come true, I will cause your two sons, Hepna, uh, Hopni and uh, Phineas, uh, to die on the same day. Then I will raise up a faithful priest who will serve me and do what I desire. I will establish his family and they will be priests for my anointed kings forever. Then all of your surviving family will bow before him, begging for money and food. Please, they will say, give us jobs among the priests so we will have enough to eat. Wow, this sounds harsh. This sounds like, oh my gosh. But you need to understand, God is a God of incredible grace, incredible mercy, that he will wait long time before he actually uh, um, uh, fulfills what needs to happen, which is his justice. You know, you and I do not want to serve a God that does not actually have justice. Well, you and I probably want justice to happen sooner, especially if it happens against us. But God is slow. He is slow in the judgment that takes place. He is slow in that because he wants to give as many people an opportunity, first and foremost, to receive him. Second, to learn from the things that they need to learn, to give warning after warning. I can look at my own life. And I can see how many times that I could have suffered major downfall in my life, but God intervened. He intervened through people. He intervened through other pastors. He intervened through friends. And yes, don't let her listen to this. He intervened through my wife. So make sure she's quiet. Don't tell her about this one. But uh, God has used, you know, so many people in my life that has helped me avoid some of the major downfalls. Have I suffered consequences? Absolutely. But it could have been so much worse if I had not listened to the warnings that the Lord had given through his people. And may that be a warning for us as we close out today, that there may be things that's happening in our lives. And maybe you're listening and watching today. And maybe God is just kind of impressing through his Holy Spirit on, hey, you know, let's wake up. Let's change some of the things in, these li in, in your life. And the change starts by first admitting it's taking place. By first saying, you know what? I have sinned against God and against his people. And God, help me. Forgive me. Help me to make that known to some others who can walk this journey of faith with me. And trust me, it is far better for you and I to bring it to the light than for us to be found out in the darkness. There is far more grace, far more mercy that takes place. And my hope is that you would also continue to pray for myself as a pastor and the rest of the pastors and the spiritual leaders and elders of our church, that we might be fully attuned to what the Lord is doing so that we can help the people and not and not be a church that because of our sins and our um, lack of focus on the Lord would turn people and their hearts away from him. So with that being said, let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for today. For the opportunity to worship you, to love you and be reminded of your truth and your love and your grace, but also your justice and your mercy. And I pray that you would just help us to understand what that looks like in our lives, help bring 
to the front uh, to confess, to bring to you things and areas that we know that we may be falling far short of you. Father, we can't fix this by good works. We just fix it by bringing it to you, allowing your spirit to work and helping us to have the strength to talk to somebody else. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, I love you so much and uh, so appreciative of you. Just don't forget, we got services, you know, on Thursday night, Sunday morning. Pass this on, you know, on your uh, social media accounts if it's something that you believe that other people might be interested in as we continue through the book of 1 Samuel. Love you guys. Have a great day.